Hello everyone, I'm Jayshree. Welcome to this introduction to my polka dot series that I've been working with. And we'll be using this pattern to make a beanie, a scarf, a cardigan and a sweater. I'm hoping that you're going to enjoy it just as much as I did. So the purpose of this introduction is to show you how I go about forming these polka dots and to just explain to you my thought behind it and the yarn that you would need. Now for my um, pattern, uh, especially with the cardigan and sweater, I used a category four yarn, which is a worsted weight. Now it's a thicker yarn. And the thing to remember is you need to use the same weight of yarn or category of yarn throughout the pattern. That means you cannot change from a worsted weight to a light worsted or like from um, category four yarn to a category three. It's got to be a category, in my case, for the a sweater and cardigan, I used a category four yarn throughout the pattern that even those polka dots that I formed was the same weight of yarn. Now, by all means, you can go ahead and use a double knit, which is a category three light worsted yarn like I have here. But the thing is, you need to make sure that all your different colors are in the same weight. For a category three yarn, I would use a four millimeter hook. For the category four yarn, I'm using a five comma five millimeter hook. So to begin with the swatch, we'll form a slip knot. Then it's chain 11. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Round one into the fourth chain from the hook, double crochet. One, two, three, four. So it's yarn over into that fourth chain, insert the hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, go through two loops on the hook, yarn over, go through two loops on the hook. And then Continue with double crochets to the end of the round. I've continued on working those double crochets to the end of that round. So that first, if you remember, we had um, skipped those three chains to work our first double crochet. So that actually forms the first stitch, the turning chain. So if you count our stitches, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so round two, chain three, one, two, three, and turn. Into the next two stitches, work two double crochets. That chain three counts as our first stitch. So the pattern is into the next two stitches, work two double crochets. So here's my first and my second. For the second stitch, I'll leave it unfinished because at this point, I'll start forming the polka dot pattern. I'll bring in here's my next skein of yarn. And I haven't cut off any lengths of yarn. This, this, this swatch is going to give me an indication of the length of yarn that I need for my pattern. I'll take that and I'll form a little loop. I'll bring in the hook and I'll complete my stitch with that color, change of color. Now here there's two different ways of working the pattern. You'll notice that I kept... Um, my my patterns have a distinct right side and a wrong side because you will see like tail ends sticking through on the wrong side but um i will show you another way in which you don't see as many tail ends on the wrong side so for the way that i work the pattern is i pushed all these tail ends including my original color to the back without cutting off anything 
and then into the next three stitches with three double crochets with this change of color. So that's one, two, three, and then I'll leave that last stitch unfinished. So I have two loops on my hook and I'll push this tail end right to the back and I'll go back and bring bring my original color forward. So I'll thread that through to complete the stitch. Now, if you look at the back, here's my original color and the tail end. Now that will remain this way throughout the pattern unless you want to change it. And I will show you a way to do so. Um, let me just continue with this. Into the last three stitches, work three double crochets in the original color. One, two, and my last stitch is worked into that third chain from our turning chain. So round two is complete and I have all my tail ends at the, on the wrong side of the pattern. So if I can just go back, just to show you here how to lose that, that tail end. So I'll go right back and here I have it. I've changed the color of my yarn. So I'll keep this tail end to the back of my pattern because that will have to be woven in. And I'll pick up on my original color, laying it flat with my stitches. And now I'm working with my change of color. So into those next three stitches, I'll work my three stitches, but I'll keep that tail end of my original color in place so that it's worked into the pattern. So here goes. Two and three. I'll leave that stitch unfinished and at this point I'll push back on my change of color and I'll bring through my original color. I'll bring it through those two loops to complete the stitch and then I'll finish off my three stitches in my original color. One, two and three. Now let's look at the back at the wrong side. You can see now that I've lost that, that tail end of the original color. Well, there's nothing you can do about this and these because you will have to eventually weave them in. So it's up to you how you'd like to do it. I just find that if you do look, if you do feel through it, it does feel a little bit bulky, but, but really it's your opinion. It's just that I went about doing my pattern, working my pattern in that way, where there's a definite wrong side and a right side. Okay, so for now, but you, you decide the way you'd like to do it and that's perfectly all right. Round three, chain three, one, two, three, chain three counts as our first stitch. Into the next stitch, work one double crochet. So that's one stitch and leave that double crochet unfinished. Bring Bring forward on your original color because this is the wrong side that we're working on. And you'll pick up on that tail end of the change of color. So you'll thread it through to complete the stitch. Then into the next five stitches, work five double crochets. So it's yarn over. And you'll notice that I'm making certain that all these tail ends are on the wrong side. Like I'm not going this way about and showing, bringing that to the front. I'm keeping it at the back and I'm only going into the stitch. So that was one, two, three, four, and five and I'll leave the last stitch unfinished. 
I'll go back, make certain that this tail end is on the wrong side, go back to my original color, pick up on it to complete the stitch. Into the next two stitches, work two double crochets. So that's one. And into that third chain from the turning chain, I'll work my last stitch. So that was two. Round four. One, two, three. And turn. Into the next two stitches, work two double crochets. So that's one and two. Leave that stitch unfinished. Keep your tail end at the back. Pick up on your change of color. Bring it through to complete the stitch. Into the next three stitches, work three double crochets. So that's one, two, and three. Then I'll leave that unfinished, push back this tail end on the wrong side, pick up on my original color, bring it through to complete the stitch. Into the next three stitches, work three double crochets. So that's one, two, three. And that gives us our polka dot pattern. You may have to stretch it out a bit just to get the shape right. But that's the pattern we'll be using. So now the whole idea, like I said, the whole idea of the swatch was to give us an idea of the length of yarn that we need to form this polka dot. Yes, I know it was a lot of work, but unfortunately, we will have to open the whole thing up. So here, at this point, I need to cut off on my change of color. I'll leave the, the, the original as it is because I can go ahead and reuse that. It's not like it's a waste. Nothing is a waste for the swatch. We will be using it. The whole I would suggest that you do leave a longer length behind because that just helps with sometimes uh, you may find that when you bring in yarn and things, you, you don't want to be left with a too short tail end. So I'm leaving behind a longer length. It's about I'll leave behind about eight inches from there to there. So that's my tail end that I'll leave behind and I can trim off on that piece. Now, if I open up the whole thing, So this is the length of yarn that I'll be using for my pattern. Now you can go ahead and use this length to cut up all the lengths of yarn that you need for your pattern. And well, that was the purpose of this tutorial. Um, I hope that you enjoy my patterns for the scarf, beanie, cardigan and sweater. Thank you for watching.